Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's borough board meeting. In the interest of participants, health and safety, we are again meeting through this WebEx video conference platform during our ongoing pandemic, which I pray will be over soon. As authorized by the extension of remote opening meetings under the law, Governor Hathi, Kathy Hochul signed into law on January 14th, 2022. There are no voting items on the agenda for tonight's meeting. Please note that this virtual meeting is being recorded to comply with the open meetings law for transparency. The recording will be available at a later date on the borough president's YouTube channel. Um, for those of you who do not know me, good evening to you. I am Diana Richardson, your deputy borough president. It is my pleasure to be here with you this evening. And I would now like to turn the mic over to my phenomenal director of community boards, Ms. Caroline Church, who will call the roll. Good evening, everyone. And I just want to echo the deputy's appreciation for everyone who took the time out um, to fulfill their commitment as a member of the borough board. I will start the roll with the council members. District 33. District 34. District 35. Present. Thank you. District 36. District 37. District 38. District 39. District 40, District 41, District 42, <coughs> District 43. Miss Fisher from District 42. Hi, Miss Fisher. Hi, how are you? Wow. District 44, District 45. Tamara Bonet Cardona for District 45, Council Member Lewis. District 46. Kim Robinson for Council Member Mercedes Narcisse. District 47. District 48. Thank you to the Council Member reps who are here this evening. Community boards. Community board one. Yeah. Community board two. Present. Community board three. Present. Community board four. Presente. <laughs> Thank you. Community board five. Community board six. Community board seven. Community board eight. Present. Hi, Ms. Weatherspoon. Hello, good evening. Community Board 9. Community Board 10. Present. Community Board 11. Present. Community Board 12. Present. Community Board 13. Yes, uh, Jeff Sandoff, first vice chair representing CB 13 with my colleague Zanira Ahmed, uh, second vice chair. Thank you. Thank you. Community Board 14. Good evening, Joanne Brown, present. Community Board 15. Teresa Scavo, chair, present. Community Board 16. Janice Morgan, chair, present. Community Board 17. Joan Alexander Bakria, dean, chair, present. Community Board 18. Thank you to all the chairs. I think today we have probably all the chairs um, except for two and for any designees that are also here. Thank you for attending. Madam Deputy, the roll call has been concluded. Thank you, Carolyn. I appreciate you as usual. Um, so we already have called the roll and approved the agenda. Wait, let me see here. 
All right, we need to approve the agenda. Can we do an approval of the agenda and adoption of the past minutes um, for the meeting that was held on April the 5th of 2002 at the borough board meeting? Um, approvals, copies of the minutes were sent to all members. Does anyone have any corrections or amendments? There being no objection, the minutes are adopted. Just by the way, for full transparency, thank God for Carolyn Chance Church, because there's a whole script here, you guys. Remember, this is my second borough board meeting. So as I'm making the mistakes, I'm honest enough to say I'm reading. But trust me, I got personality on my own. When I get this down by the third or fourth meeting, we'll be rocking and rolling. All right. So this evening's fourth agenda item. All right. We have a presentation here from the Duh. Department of Youth and Community Development. Do we have our representatives, Ms. Candace Julian and Alexander Betancourt on the line? Yes, good evening, Deputy Borough President Richardson. The DYCD team is here. Okay, Ms. Julian, you go ahead and take it away. Excellent, excellent. Thank you all so very much. Uh, good evening again. Uh, my name is Candace Julian. Uh, Director of Strategic Outreach at the Department of Youth and Community Development. I am here with my colleagues, Anita Antonetti, Mitch Noel, David Aguiloro. Forgive me if I mispronounced your last name, David. Um, and we will all be uh, happy to take any questions that you may have at the end of the chat. Let me go ahead and see uh, if I can share my screen to start tonight's IT is sharing it. Awesome. Thank you so much about your whole IT. All right. Is everyone seeing my screen okay? Awesome, thank you, thank you for checking, for confirming. And the goal of tonight's presentation is to boost participation on the Neighborhood Advisory Boards, uh, which is at 63% right now for Brooklyn, up to 100% in advance of DYCD's triannual 2022 Community Needs Assessment. Now, this may be a lot of information for some to absorb or a refresher for others. Either way, I thank you for your time and attention. Um, and before we get into the Neighborhood Advisory Board's DYCD's mission, the New York City Department of Youth and Community De Development invests in a network of community-based organizations and programs to alleviate the effects of poverty and to provide opportunities for New Yorkers and communities to flourish. The vision statement, DYCD uh, strives to improve the quality of life of New Yorkers by collaborating with local organizations and investing in the talents and assets of our communities to help them develop, grow, and thrive. Now, what is a Neighborhood Advisory Board? Neighborhood Advisory Boards, NABs as I call them, are made up of 12 community members who identify program needs for specific areas they reside within called the Neighborhood Development Area. Members are appointed by elected officials from federal, state, and local levels, along with DYCD, to identify those program priorities for their neighborhood development area. Now, again, what is this thing called a NAB? NABs are a part of a national initiative called Community Action. Back in 1964, President Lyndon B. Johnson declared a war on poverty, which paved the way for New York City to receive roughly $30 million of community service block grant funding to administrative programs like workforce development, after school programs, ESL classes, and much more. DYCD administers that community service block grant funding that I mentioned to CBO to deliver programs and services uh, it, depending on the needs of the community. And that translates to operating contracts on average totaling $100,000 for three years for CBOs to deliver services NAB members identify uh, as needs in their community. New York City is currently divided into 41 neighborhood development areas, each with a NAB to represent the community. Uh, there are 16 NABs in Brooklyn, 11 in the Bronx, 8 in Queens, 5 in Manhattan, and 1 in Staten Island. And NAVs were created in response to the call for communities to have maximum feasible participation in the decision making around programs and services that will alleviate the effects of poverty within their community. Now, 
here's a bird's eye view of Brooklyn's NAB membership. Again, we would love to have full participation on all boards ahead of this summer's community needs assessment and encourage you all to direct residents who may not have been appointed to serve on community boards or those with who are active volunteers in your district offices or volunteer at events to serve on their local neighborhood advisory board. Uh, again, here's a, it's a quick bird's eye view of the vacancies. Um, we have 121 current members and there's 71 vacancies across the various neighborhood advisory boards in Brooklyn. And again, we see um, Congress members, state senators, assembly members, council members all have appointing power uh, and, and the borough president, of course. Um, so we will be reaching out and following up with the representatives and working with uh, the borough hall staffers to help reach out to these elected officials to fill those vacancies. Here's also a quick snapshot of uh, Brooklyn's neighborhood advisory boards and their district maps. Um, each NAB represents a neighborhood development area. Um, and I, I point this out because there's some overlay with community board districts, but the lines follow federal poverty lines. So the boundary lines don't necessarily reflect the community board or the council district. And again, I'll be sending around emails to every community board on um, outlining their NAB membership, the boundary lines, application, FAQ sheets. So don't worry about squinting to see your boundary lines. Now, the community needs assessment, as we all know, is a, is a stakeholder engagement process through which DYCD collects feedback from the community about what programs and services are most needed. Uh, this is a quick, this is a really great snapshot from the last community assessment around what those results were. Looking at it, we can see that um, Brooklyn NAP 3 bed -Stuy identified basic needs as a top unmet service in the community, followed by employment and career advancement services and education. So members are the heroes of the community. They ensure an opportunity to provide feedback uh, on programs and unmet needs in the community are met. Uh, they also hold public meetings where the community-based organizations can make presentation on their programs and where members can speak about, again, those human services that are needed. Okay, so where does the community needs assessment information go? Um, again, it identifies resource gaps and needs. DYCD develops a menu of programs and services for each NDA that aligns with the community needs. We inform, it informs program design and agency-wide policy. And we also share that information collected with other city agencies doing similar work. All right. Oh, before I jump into that, I'd also note that this year, the community needs assessment will be available digitally. We hope that when provided to everyone in this meeting, uh, community boards, city agencies, elected officials, that you share it with your constituents uh, via e-blast, social media, or good old fashioned word of mouth. Um, now, to drill down a bit further, looking at this slide on what it means to be a member of a neighborhood advisory board, Think of their three-year term as a cyclical process. If appointed to serve ahead of the 2022 community needs assessment, members will first administer the CNA, um, and that will be done again digitally, um, blasting it to uh, the block associations, community gardens groups, the CECs, PTAs, wherever people meet. Um, so e-blasting that information out, tabling at block parties, at uh, community board events, national night out. Uh, so we will be doing that. They then evaluate the community needs assessment to set program priorities. They then read and choose proposals when it's that time of year, because uh, the uh, RFPs of, around CSBG are um, every three years, all while being an active community resident, um, knowing the needs of the community and the evolution of the uh, community itself. Um, and again, my colleagues and I will be sharing contact information um, in the chat, and we ask that you, as community board um, chairs, district managers, 
um, members of the executive team, add us to your listserv to keep us in the loop around events coming up this summer because we would love to come out and table. Again, that'll be an opportunity for us at DYCD and the local neighborhood advisory board members to engage with the community around that digital or paper survey. We are also seeking community co-hosts with hybrid meeting capabilities to partner with their local neighborhood advisory board to schedule public hearings for the community needs assessment later this summer, early fall. Um, so again, over the next few days, I will we'll be reaching out to everyone providing district specific uh, information on the makeup of their neighborhood advisory board um, and following up on all those ask I mentioned. Um, and I wanted to point out Discover DYCD, uh, this white circle here, it's a great online tool that can help you identify DYCD funded programs in your neighborhood, whether it be after school, ESL classes, or workforce development, all city funded programs can be found, um, and that's www.dycdconnect.nyc. It's a great tool uh, to help uh, your constituents as they seek uh, services. Now, I'm sure the next slide requires no refresher, but I would be remiss if I did not mention that the SYEP deadline uh, for applications was extended an additional two weeks to this Friday, May 6th. Nearly 130,000 young people have already applied so far, and this extension definitely gives more families and youth an opportunity to participate in this record-breaking uh, opportunity this summer. And to summarize uh, and lay out the plan of action to get maximum feasible participation uh, of community members in advance of the community needs assessment. First, please help us spread the word about serving on a neighborhood advisory board. Um, as we follow up in that email, we'll provide hyperlinks, graphics, anything you need that will, you know, be able to help you spread the word. Um, elected officials uh, from those various levels of government um, work with us to appoint uh, constituents to that neighborhood advisory board, um, assist DYCD in administering the 2022 community needs assessment. Again, that's letting us know what events are coming up where we can table. Also possibly co par partnering with us to co-host the, the public hearings for the needs assessment. And uh, again, just helping us fill those vacancies. And of course, using Discover DYCD to locate DYCD funded programs and services. That's the end of my presentation. And I and the team at DYCD would be happy to answer any questions. Ms. Julian, does that conclude your presentation? Yes, that is the end of my presentation, yes. And I will be happy to answer any questions around the neighborhood advisory boards, yes. Okay, so I see Ms. Morgan. Uh, Ms. Morgan, please go ahead and ask your question. Hi, good evening. Um, thank you so much for that presentation. Um, I have the uh, distinct pleasure of working for a nonprofit organization that was created out of the uh, anti poverty uh, initiative that you mentioned. And um, they've been around for, I believe, 40, uh, actually almost 50 years. Um, and so, um, and, and uh, that restoration is one other. Group. So Brownsville Community Development Corporation, as well as Best Eye Restoration was created out of those um, investments. And so um, I hear the word anti-poverty, uh, you know, tossed around often. And I just want to know if you all have data on um, how impactful um, these programs have been over the years, because obviously there's lots of conversations around, um, uh, you know, uh, the minimum wage and, uh, bringing, um, you know, income levels up and, um, you know, folks are, are looking at creative um, ways to ensure that people who have low income, uh, that their income can increase. And so I'm just curious, like, you know, if there's data available to that can, you know, 
say that these anti-poverty programs have increased income or, um, you know, quality of life, like how impactful, um, you know, are they in, you know, in terms of encouraging people to, to lend their time to participate in these boards um, with the hopes of achieving additional results? Definitely, definitely. And this is a question I'm sure my uh, colleague Anita Antonetti can answer spot on. But what I can say, um, and I can share the link with you um, to drill down on those metrics. Um, what I love working at DYCD is that they're a data driven agency, that we are a data driven agency. Um, and there are metrics around um, because it's a federal program, so there's you know annual reporting around participation. Um, so I will share that link because um, I know that there are reports from the CNA and things like that. Um, so there. So forgive me for not having a clear cut yes at this percent. Um, and Anita, please feel free to jump in and you know add anything to it. But as far as metrics, I can provide a snapshot of that in the chat. Yes. And and not yeah. only do does DYCD have metrics, the state of New York, the Department of State also has metrics as well as our um, uh, statewide uh, community action agency association also has metrics. But this program has been around since 1964. It's 58 years. Um, so you can't think that it's the same people that are being served for these last 58 years. It's different people, and, and what the program is designed to do is to alleviate the effects of poverty that allows people to grow and to uh, finish school, to go on to college, to become professionals. So that's, that's how the pro program has been designed. And there have been many, many people who have come through those programs um, that are very successful. I mean, Damon John is one of them who always says, I went through SYP, which is part of this program. Um, and um, and then there are plenty of uh, elected officials that have gone through the programs as well, and other professionals, doctors, lawyers, nurses, educators, a lot of educators. Um, so we do have that information and this program does the help. It's not a lot of money. It's $30 million uh, every year uh, from the federal government that is given to us through the state of New York. And, um, and it's, it does, it does help over the years. It has helped a lot. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. And so, but the initial investment, and um, if I may just ask a follow up question. So mm -hmm. the initial sure. investment was 30 million. And so currently the investment is still 30 million. The amount no, has the not increased at all. I don't, I don't have the, the statistics on the initial investment. I, I am thinking that it was probably a lot less right now. Okay. Currently. It's $30 million. It's okay. uh, about 716 million for the whole country. New York State gets about uh, 62 uh, million. And, and then we here in New York, because we have uh, uh, five counties, we get half of that to run these programs. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Sorry, I'm, I'm messing with this mute button. I would like to call Mr. Jeffrey Sanoff, Vice Chair, First Vice Chair, CB13. Thank you very much, Deputy Borough President. Uh, my question is on the, when you divide up the monies for the Brooklyn NABs, are they all equivalent or how are these monies determined by their, by their projects or surveys? How do, how do they get to the money the money management? The money, the money is um, allocated by the the percentage, the population and poverty in each one of the neighborhood development areas. Okay, I noticed that in my particular area, Coney Island, the map was a deep red. Does that mean anything 
compared to the other colors on the map? Uh, no, I think the, the, the colors are just to distinguish the different areas so that you can see the separation of the yeah, different okay, so areas. Yeah. So it doesn't but, have anything to do with the, uh, excuse me, it doesn't have anything to do with the poverty level. No, uh, but the, uh, I don't have the statistics with me, but Coney Island does get, has, has um, a lot of money. <laughs> okay, that's good to hear. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that question. I'm acknowledging Ms. Joanne Brown, CB14. Good evening. Thank you, Deputy Borough President. Um, <clears throat> so, first, uh, I just want to say that I've noted that we have 3 vacant seats on our local NAB and I'll get on that. Um, I have a, a question. Hopefully someone can answer it. If not, you know, we can answer it at a later time. Um, the district manager of community board 14 reported to me that there is no longer a DCYD representative to district service cabinet. Um, is this a temporary condition? Um. We'll circle back with, um, forgive us for that, with our intergovernmental department uh, to, there is the rep Alexander, uh, forgive me, his last name starts with a B, but we'll make those connections uh, to ensure that someone is attending the district service cabinet meeting. Um, Much appreciated Alexander, because we miss you. Alexander Thank you. Betancourt. Yeah, we'll, we'll get that information to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Brown. I would like to acknowledge Mr. Robert Camacho. 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 Got to fix that. How are you? How are you? Awesome. Um, Thank yes, you for Mr. joining Camacho. us. How are you? I, I was a, a CAV member at a CB4 uh, for a while, and it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's I'm just I'm bringing it to let everyone know that they should uh, get involved because some of, and know that some of the money that goes through the DYCD is for our youth uh, to use and make sure that the funding that is there that we can allocate it to uh, the CBO that in the area that are doing the job, you know, and making sure that the services are in there and letting them know that just because there is a CYDC in one of the public schools that is not only for the kids that go to the school, it's for everyone, all the kids in the community. Because sometimes we be hearing that uh, uh, these uh, 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 CBOs that run these programs that are getting the funding through a DYCD indicates that those uh, uh, youth is only for the kids that go to school, to the school that just it's in area four. No, it's not. Anyone can go, any of our kids can go to the thing. I was involved. I hope a lot of you guys uh, on this on this board, uh, chairpersons or anyone that you will know to get on this board and make sure that the services that uh, uh, DYCD have and the Neighborhood Advisory Board go directly to uh, the programs that are in and whatever's not working, get them out and whatever's working, make sure that the funding is there. And I'm, I'm, I was a pride member for a long time there. And it, it, it's very good because they teach you how to, uh, here's the money, these are the organizations that are there, find out what's working uh, and make sure that the services go. They interview uh, some of the peoples and stakeholders that are applying for the RFP in regards to these programs. And it's an intestine, it's something that uh, 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 a lot of people can use and, and learn. So I just want to thank you guys because I know I was part of that board for a while. Uh, for I think there's a term limit uh, for two years. Am I right? No, it's a six year. Uh, it's two. Oh, I thought it. I thought, oh, it is a six year. Oh, what y'all doing? A, a, yeah. Oh, I thought it was only a two year in regards to the CYTC. All right, I will check. Nope. Uh, the chairman of the has term limits, but not the members. No, no, chairman doesn't have term limits. The chairman can't be chair for, uh, uh, has, as a chairperson has li limits. They have a three year that's uh, limit that's to be chair, but that's to allow other people right. to take the lead on the board. Uh, but the the term for each member is, is six years. And if we're in the middle of a community needs assessment or reading proposals, we will extend it up to another two years. Thank you. 
things. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Camacho. Thank you, Mr. Camacho. If you have spoken, I ask that you please lower your hand to make this easier for my eyes on the dashboard. I would like to acknowledge and call Ms. Joan Bakradan. Thank you, Deputy Borough President Richardson. Good evening, everyone. I have a question regarding the neighborhood, the, the NABs. So will DYCD add additional NABs to include all neighborhoods? Because for example, East Flatbush, Erasmus, Northeast Flatbush does not have a, a NAB. We're currently not within the listing here. So uh, forgive, go ahead, Anita, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, Candace, you can say. I was gonna say, um, Northeast Flatbush, and we can drill down on that a little bit more. Um, for the sake of space, I just, you know, gave overarching neighborhoods. Um, and again, when I follow up and I send, you know, the information, you know, looking at, you know, the district maps, they're cut, you know, different. So the neighborhood may be in there, but for the sake of space, I may have just put Flatbush or, you know, an overarching neighborhood. Um, so as for far I'm sorry, for clarity, when the original, when we were open, and able to go to Borough Hall, um, there was a neighborhood, uh, I keep wanting to call a neighborhood assembly because of PB, but there was a NAB meeting hosted where you were trying to encourage people to join. And at that moment mm -hmm. in 2019, it was okay. determined that there was no na NAB for our district. Got it. Yeah. All right. Um, the NAB, the neighborhood development areas are determined on, on the pod. The population that's in the uh, that meets the federal poverty guidelines, it has to be 20% or more. Um, as we know, people move around, so every time we're going to release a request for proposals um, for programs, uh, we have to do an assessment based on the information that city planning uh, gives us to determine which neighborhoods qualify as 20% or, or above uh, poverty. So it may change over, and it has changed over time. Um, I, I, I've been working with this for the last uh, 10 years, so I've seen it a couple of times that it's changed. Some areas that were a uh, neighborhood development area are no longer a neighborhood de development area because of gentrification or or just uh, people uh, moving out. Uh, we use the, uh, we don't use the, the census that's every 10 years. We use the community, um, it's called a community, I forgot the exact name, but the, they do an in-depth census of areas every year. So we usually use the previous three years the last time we did this, it was, we did it in 2019. So it was the 2018, 2017, and 2016 we used to determine the neighborhood development areas. Uh, we will be having, uh, our programs are starting, are starting this July 1st for that uh, request for proposals. So uh, they will run uh, three years, and then we will do another needs assessment, and that will probably be based on um, 2024, 2023, and 2022. So that's that's how the neighborhood development areas are are determined. And it could be okay, thank that, you. that that twenty percent, you know, it could be that the government will decide that the, the the twenty percent can be lowered or or higher, and then and and then that that might change it as well. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's very technical. Okay, thank you. I would like to acknowledge Miss Witherspoon. Um, thank you. Thank you, Deputy Borough President Richardson. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for your presentation. I was wondering if it would be available uh, uh, for us to all receive it. Uh, um, yes, I can share it with, I, I can include it in the email that I will send to the community boards after, share it with um, Carol Ann and the team at Borough Hall, um, should there need to be, you know, so they can share it as well with everyone that's on tonight's meeting, yes. Wonderful, thank you so much. Along with applications and the FAQ sheet, of course, yes, the information will be shared, yes. Mm -hmm. 
and the, I noticed that the application has already been uh, dropped awesome. uh, as a link. Thank you. Thank you, team. Okay, and I would cheer men from CB3. Mr. Anthony, did you feel that you got an answer to your question that was here in the chat? I did, but I have another question. Go ahead for it now. Thank you, Madam uh, Deputy Borough President. And can you do hello? me a favor? Yes. Pronounce your last name for me so I can say it. Busereth. Busereth. Go ahead, Mr. Busereth. Um, and good to see you again, Candace. Um, yeah. Um, a question about the application. So one of the first lines asks for referred by. Should individuals who are referred by community boards or like community board chairs in state state that? Um, on their applications, or does that not matter? Yes, no, it, it it matters because that we we look at that and see who's recommending people. So um, they should so say is, the community board or well, the chair. They should probably say the chair because or it's not it could be the chair. Com community board three chair it could be okay. that. Great. Um, and you. if it's uh, an elected official, we like to know that as well. But if, even if it's just a. a Another uh, NAB member, that's fine too. Great. Thank you. Okay. And um, when are the appointments effective again? The appointments, it's on a rolling basis. So as soon as the application is processed, it's uh, usually they're, they're appointed. All right. Thank you so much. That's when their term begins. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And if appropriate, I would like to add some feedback from my end. Um, number one, we do need an update to this uh, diagram because I'm no longer an assembly member. Um, and I would ask you to look through for those kind of things of anyone that's particularly under nine. But what I will tell you, being a former state elected, not once did DYCD ever reach out to me to notify me that I had an appointment to this board. As a matter of fact, the board was operating within nine. Everybody knows uh, my reputation of being on it. Um, and it was noted by one of the members who were there that I consistently didn't fill my vacancy. So they reached out to my office to ask me why not. Had that community resident not done that, I don't think I would have, no, I would not have known as a state elected official that I had an appointment to the neighborhood advisory board since it is being operated under the city of New York. And while everyone thinks government is just government, there's many silos there. So I would ask, speaking for the state electeds here, that we do a specific reach to them to notify them that they have um, the appointment, what the terms are, what the qualifications are, everything that you just said here tonight. And I'm sure that majority of the vacancies that you have in the vacancy range come from the state electors. And that's because you're not outreaching. And we simply just don't know that we have a chip on the board here. Yeah. So, and I would say, I would thank you so much for that. And I can say that the team that's on um, at DYCD, we do sometimes reach out uh, to the uh, the offices, but that's why I said, you know, relationship matters and why we're doing these presentations um, because, you know, a referral is always better than a cold call or a cold email. So we will definitely be, you know, making those calls, sending in those emails and hope that, you know, our partners in government at the community boards um, can all assist us as well in spreading the word. But that sentiment is definitely heard and we will be making a valiant effort with the state elected officials to make sure it's on their radar, definitely. Thank you, Ms. Julianne, and thank you to your team, and I vouch to be a supporter to you in that endeavor. I'm seeing no other questions or hands raised. I will move on with tonight's meeting. Um, I need to backtrack a moment. Um, it was a loss of mind, not of heart. I want to acknowledge Jesus Marshall, our IT director or some sort of director here at Brooklyn Borough Hall, who is keeping all of this technology together in the front, the back, the side, the side. So we just say thank you. Thank you so much, Jesus. You can hear me, but we can't see you. But I thank you for ensuring that tonight um, broadcast is coming through crystal clear. Uh, Ms. Julianne, you and your team can feel free to stay on um, and just listen. Or if not, go and enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, so I... 
appreciate you for sharing information and remind everyone on this line that there's many ways that people can serve in the community. As you guys know, we are going through um, the community board application process and we'll be trying to use some of the people who didn't get selected to possibly take part in the neighborhood advisory board, plus doing ongoing outreach in the community. So we just look forward to everyone's assistance of getting this all filled out. All right, moving on swiftly. It's time for some Borough Hall updates. Now, if you didn't join us last weekend on Sunday, April 24th, boy, did you miss something good. But I'm sure you could follow up with all of the news stations, both in video, audio, and in writing. We had a phenomenal inauguration here um, at Borough Hall for our Borough President Antonio Reynosto, very well attended, not your traditional inauguration at all. It was short to the point, very sweet, full of culture, full of liveliness and vibrancy, which much of this administration would be about. I wanna thank everyone who took time to come out to support us. Um, and just know that Brooklyn is uh, a place of vibrant culture. And we look forward in this particular administration of making sure that every corner, every culture, everyone is acknowledged, seen, amplified, and uplifted in this time of service. So yes, you know, last week we kicked it off and started um, with the Caribbean culture because that's where we're from, but we look forward to being out and supporting everyone. Um, Brooklyn Borough Hall and our entire team under the leadership of Borough President Reynoso has been very hard at work in really building the infrastructure. Um, everyone knows here, you might be the chair, but without your team, you are nothing. And so what we are doing is putting all the pieces in places. We're still hiring, um, massive hiring that's going on at Borough Hall. I encourage everyone to continue to check the websites for the job postings that come online daily. Uh, we are looking for individuals who can work with a high level of autonomy, but who have a passion to deliver for people. You know, um, a lot of people like a, uh, like a job, but not everybody likes to really get up to go to work. We know how that is. Um, but we need folks who are going to be on this team and be about the unity vision. So I ask you to please continue to see that we are hiring. Check the website. Um, all right. You might have seen in the news media, if you haven't, I'm letting you know right now, the borough president released the official administration transition report where you can read all of our priorities and how we envision in reaching our goals in Brooklyn. I suggest that you as chair members take a look at the transition report. Um, and provide us with your feedback and see how you, your board, and or the subcommittees that function under your board can take part and add value to these conversations and the endeavors that will be happening around Brooklyn. Um, just know that like anything, the transition document is a living document, um, and so it will constantly mold and take shape. But I urge you to go out and see where we are starting so you know where we are going. If you are not following us on social media, I suggest you do so at BKBP Reynoso on all social media platforms, brooklyn-usa.org. Brooklyn-usa.org is the website. Um, so when I talked about those job posting and all other updates, you can find it there. The borough president recently announced a mental, not mental, we have a lot of mental health, but we have a new maternal health task force. Unfortunately, African-American women and women of color are dying at disproportionate rates in this county, and we seek to close that gap. Um, the maternal task force will inform the borough president on programs that will ultimately close these risk levels of disparities in maternal mortality, um, and so we are looking to our counterparts in the healthcare arena and beyond to inform our decision making on how we move forward to tackle that particular issue. But just know it is high on our radar um, and we are putting our money, our time and our intelligence where our mouth is. 
Borough Hall has also been open back up to the people. We've been hosting a number of events here at Brooklyn Borough Hall. I'm going to ask Miss Church to follow up after this. So all of you have our new space reservations form. So you know how to request space um, and, and usage of that. There are some stipulations around it, but all things will be um, outlined for you in the document. Um, so far in this administration, we've held an exhibit called Brooklyn is Africa. It was an art exhibit. We did a Women's History Month celebration. And all last month, still currently, we've been doing a lot of iftars, but we had an iftar event here for Ramadan, which was well attended. And um, honestly, let me just say this. In, in my, I love to say my new job, in my new role, right? The, the most beautiful thing about Brooklyn and Brooklyn Borough Hall is really the diversity of culture, but just the inclusion and the openness of everyone. I've just seen that um, across the borough. I was with the Brooklyn Chinese American Association. I was with the Orthodox Greeks. I was, I was with everybody. And, and there's just so much love in Brooklyn. And I just want to say thank you to all of you for being a part of that. Um, just know that um, this is a team we are building. We don't claim to know everything, but we are smart enough to know that we have to get partners to help us to do the job. So elevate your voice. Um, with that, I would turn this over now to Ms. Carol Ann Church for updates on our community boards. Good evening again. Um, I just like to acknowledge the presence of Barry Spitzer, who's on from CB12, but seems to be having problems with his um, audio. I totally understand that, Barry. Um, is there anyone on who, when the role was called, um, was not able to respond? Please drop a note in the chat. Lucy, I see you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, so I know everyone has the question on their minds. When will we get to know who the new community board members are? And the official answer to that is soon, very, very soon. Uh, we're, we're, we're close. We're very, very close. Um, we're tidying everything up because it, it's a lot of paper as uh, the deputy says, it's a lot of paper. So we're trying to make sure that there are no errors. We're very close. Um, with that said, uh, the next thing that I think community boards will be concerned about is the expiration of the remote meetings order, which is scheduled to expire on June 8th. Uh, we, we were pleasantly surprised when it uh, was extended. And as of now, we have no indication that it will be extended again. Fortunately for us at the borough board, our next meeting is June 7th, which means that we will again get to meet uh, remotely. Uh, however, community boards, very few community boards will probably um, have met by, by June 8th. So it is suggested very strongly that boards begin to prepare for the return to in-person meetings starting June 8th. I have a question for, for the borough board. Do you traditionally meet during the summer months? No, it's on the city charter, July and August we're off. Well, actually not for the borough board, for the, for the community boards. For the community boards, yes. Right, but the borough board, have you continued to meet? The charter doesn't speak to um, no. a, a summer recess as it does. But you no, have because the boards are on hiatus, there are usually no borough boards during the summer. Okay. Um, we so have board community board 15. We've had borough board meetings in July for the last several years. August because of night out against crime, that sufficed for August, but we were meeting in July. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Just needed to clarify that as we move to the summer months. Yeah. Just to make it clear for Robert's comment, the city charter states that you may 
which is a big word in this world, may not have mm-hmm. July and August. Some community boards choose, most community boards in Brooklyn choose not to have meetings in July and August. So as I said, the, the MAY is a big word. So some, com- like my community board, we probably will be meeting in July this year. Oh, I meant the borough board, not community board. Yeah, no, and then back to Teresa's point, July, yes, okay. and August, no. Okay, yeah. Yeah, she's right, because there might be a personal business that needs to be addressed, so that's why they put the word May. Yeah. I've never had the entire summer off in 13 years um, from meetings, that is. So, um, in the interest of time, that's all of my updates. I'll turn it back on to our deputy BP. Thank you, Ms. Church. Next on the agenda is our council member updates. Um, just to make sure we are not missing any members who might have joined or the representatives. We'll just call district numbers and proceed from there. Representative yeah. or member, District 33. Ben, are you representing District 33? Oops. If not, Ben, you should mute yourself. District 34. Sorry, I thought I was. Are you, wait, are you representing no. District 33? No, no, I don't work for them anymore. Okay, mute yourself. I'm here, I'm here as part of the CEC. I'm sorry, I thought I was muted. Okay. Let's try this again. Everybody muted. District 33. District 34. District 35. Hi, everyone. My name is Kristen. I'm representing council member Crystal Hudson. Thank you so much. Um, Deputy Borough president. Really happy to be here. We just had 1 update. We're having a Mother's Day event this coming Friday. Um, we mm. posted the flyer on all of our socials and would love um, to see all of you guys there. Thank you. Um, Chris, Kristen, you gave us no date. We know it's Friday. You made oh. no time, no location. How can we support my girl? Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, my service is like really bad, so I was trying to talk fast. Um, yeah, so it's at um, BAM, and the doors open at 11:30. It's a Mother's Day luncheon. Um, you can we need all of our RSVPs by Thursday, and again, um, we post it on socials, but we're also forwarding it over to our community boards. Um, but we're, of course, all of Brooklyn is welcome to attend. Thank you. Last question: How do how do you do RSVP? Yes, ma'am. Um, the link is attached to the flyer. Okay, drop the flyer. That would be, would be helpful. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. District 36, 37. Hi, yes, good evening. Deputy Borough President and everyone. My name is Mohammed. I'm here representing Councilmember Sandy Nurse of the 37th District. Um, as is typical, I have an update on sanitation with Councilmember Nurse being the chair of the Sanitation Committee. As many of you probably know, the mayor proposed um, some budget cuts of around $50 million to sanitation in his preliminary budget. We've been continuing to advocate uh, for that to be restored and expanded. As you all know, in Brooklyn and elsewhere throughout the city, we have a lot of issues with litter, litter baskets, basket service, rats, et cetera. Uh, So we're continuing to advocate. We have an upcoming sanitation budget hearing um, next, uh, next Tuesday, the 10th. Um, and then there's no testimony at that meeting because it's a budget meeting, but on the 25th, there will be the city council's overall budget hearing and folks can sign up to testify there. And in the meanwhile, please continue to advocate with your council members and the administration for the restoration of sanitation funding. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Council district 38. Council district 39. Council District 40, Council District 41, Council District 42. This is Anna Fisher for Council Member Charles Barron. Go ahead, Ms. Uh, Fisher. You have the floor. At this point, I don't have anything to contribute. Thank you. All right, hey, thank you, Mr. Ben Solitaire. I am going to ask first. you to please mute yourself. Thank you, sir. Please be mindful. Council District 43. 
Council District 44, Council District 45, Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Tamara. I am representing the 45th district on behalf of council member Farrah Lewis. Um, I don't have too much and I won't keep too much of your time. This past weekend, we did have a March for justice for Cade Lewin at the Brooklyn Academy of Arts and Science of Science and Engineering. My apologies um, to celebrate his birthday and to bring awareness to gun violence in the area. Um, very successful turnout, very happy and very pleased with the, um, with the messages that we were able to send out to the community and we will be having a follow up, um, town hall for the students this week on Thursday. So very excited about that. Um, other than that. I do have a series of bystander trainings that will be launching in later this month and into June. Um, we are anticipating a minimum of two trainings per month. So very excited to um, bring these resources to the community and have that information out to you all um, as soon as possible. Thank you so much, Tamara. Council District 46. Hi, thank you, Deputy Bo President. We appreciate you. Uh, I'm Mercedes Narcis representing District 46. We want to say thank you for the support. Um, we're going to have a nice, beautiful event on May 18. And as a matter of fact, I'm sitting with Dr. Alert. We're all going around it to see how the best way we can have the best um, um, flag day in your house, in the people's house. So I'm excited for that. And we continue doing um, a lot of events. We met Mammogram. We have one on the 15th of June and um, the half fair for the seniors. MTA been excellent, been coming to their office on the first and the third of uh, Tuesday of every month. So thanks to my excellent chief of, I mean, chief of staff and uh, our coordinator, even coordinator Kim, um, Robinson, that been excellent. We've been providing a lot of care in our office. We are here to work to support the community. And I heard about the kid um, against gun violence. We made the walk. It was a success, but we have to say no to gun violence in our community. And it is imperative for us to engage our young folks, let them know that it's not acceptable. We should not have that. We should not have our children killing each other, providing the support, the program needed in our community, like I always say, crime issue don't occur in silo. It's a culmination of different issues. So we have to provide things for the kids. And thank you, Deputy, for pushing with the board president to make sure we address what needs to be addressed in our community. So thank you. Yes, hey, you. Deputy. You did. You did. You did. Mm -hmm. Deputy, you are currently muted. Deputy, I'm done. Oh, okay. Listen, I, I forgot to unmute myself. Everyone, I'm very young, but this technology is something else. So I said, <laughs> thank you to you, council member, for everything. Um, and then I called on council district 47. Council district 48. And so with that, I want to thank all of the- Hello, District 47 is here. Okay, Can please you identify yourself. Good evening, everyone. My name is Samantha Ross. I am, Dep I am Director of Constituent Services for Council Member Ari Kagan. Go ahead with your announcement, Samantha. Okay, thank you. Uh, the Council Member just wants everyone to know that we are working diligently to help restore gas is uh, three of our eight NYCHA developments that have been without glass for close to a year. He scheduled a tour with the chair, Greg Ross, to come to Coney Island June 10th, which we are hoping BP Reynoso will join for. Um, also, the council member would like to every uh, would like to update everyone on his work with the boardwalk. Um, he has brought three of his uh, colleagues to the boardwalk to look at um, crosswalks and look at schools coming up. Uh, we have an issue on West 37th Street 
We don't have a crosswalk for our seniors that is directly off, off the boardwalk. Our seniors like to go on the boardwalk there. Um, the BP was helping us fight for the, for the crosswalk with DOT. So the council member just wants to let everyone know that we're working diligently on those things and doing our best to make sure that all of our constituents are safe and living in a uh, healthy uh, living environment. That's all. All right, thank you, Samantha. And it's good to hear your voice and our regards to the council member. Council so thank you. District 48. Okay, I think that officially concludes our elected official updates. Um, I would just like to add two comments based off the elected official update. Um, council member Necessaire raised um, this month is Haitian Haitian Heritage Month, so there will be an event at Borough Hall on May 19th. And June is Caribbean Heritage Month, and so there will be a lot of events in Borough Hall in the month of June. But I urge every community on this line to reach out to Borough Hall to ensure that your culture and heritage and those that are represented within the confines of your community board is acknowledged and amplified. Um, we are willing to do it and we wanna participate. Um, and so I'm just throwing it out there to let you know that we're doing that and I'm happy. I also wanna touch upon the issue of gun violence in Brooklyn, particularly because it came in two of the council members updates about gun violence, about Kate Lewin, that's the 12 year old who was shot um, in his head and deceased while um, having dinner in the car with his cousins. Um, hmm. Brooklyn, we have a lot of work to do. And as we are about to approach the summer, I hate to be grim, but I must be honest that I don't think that we have seen on the last or even a crack of what is to come. To try to get ahead of this situation, Borough Hall is establishing safety councils. The safety councils will be running under the precinct in collaboration with the local council members. So for instance, in the, in the case of Cade Lewin, he was shot within the 67th precinct, but that was also community board 17. Now, although he was shot within the 67 precinct community board 17, that one precinct has three elected officials and each sector of that precinct is very active. So we're gonna do the 67 precinct safety council with the elected officials being a part. We're also looking for block associations, neighborhood associations, you know, the mayor of the block, but also particularly the public safety chair of your community board is a designee to this safety council and should be the one that represents your community board and also reports back to the community board about what is taking place. In these meetings, we will constantly be performing SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And we will be moving the resources of our county and our city around as we gain insight and information. Nine times out of 10, the community knows who's doing what before it happens. Um, and so what we are trying to do is we don't wanna be re reactionary, we wanna be proactive, but also we do have to understand that as um, a shooting does take place, even if it's the shooting that just also took place in Bed-Stuy or Sunset Park, there are still people right now who are at home traumatized, um, who need mental health and support services. They may even need crime victim services, relocation services, and the list goes on. But I noticed that many people in the community don't know how to connect out, but also don't know how to add their voice proactively um, to, to try to create a situation and environment that, that is nonviolent. I also ask all community boards, get your youth chair and your education chair active. Each community board should have a robust 
summer active plan. And you have public parks, you have public spaces throughout your community board. There should be activities happening all the time. Our youth, our family, our elders are looking for positive engagement. Brooklyn Borough Hall seeks to be a partner with you. So if you approach us about a collaboration, we nine times out of 10, we'll try to assist you um, to make it all possible because to assist you is um, just what we're here to do. So I just wanted to throw that out there and also to say to the chairs, we will be following up with you guys individually to have conversations to, you know, it's one thing for us to speak with the district managers and understand how they see things. It's another thing for us to speak to you and understand how you see things um, as we go through this process of getting you some new members and it'll be a full board all over again. And we all got to try to see things um, with the most clarity that we can all together. So I just want to make that light announcement, let you guys know we are hard at work because we have our hands full here. But with good partners like yourself, I know anything is possible. Um, I'm going to open the floor now to see if there's any general commentary that of anything that anyone wants to share, say. Um, and, if, and if and when that is done, we will bring this meeting to a close. Any question, comments, concerns, additions, subtractions, and possibly corrections? All right, Ms. Diaz, you're up. Hi, good evening, and thank you. I do have a question about the hybrid meetings. Um, my understand I'm chair of community board 13. Sorry if I didn't introduce myself. I wasn't here last month. My question is about the hybrid meetings. My understanding is, and I don't want to know which community board is from my district manager, that a lot of the community boards are concerned and they're not going to follow the guidance of having in-person or hybrid meetings. What will be the fallback on that on community boards? I know my community board will be following the guidelines, but I was just curious as to what is the fallback if they do not have hybrid slash in-person meetings. We will cross that bridge when we get there. Okay. The, the, the law is the law, and those that, you know, will cross that bridge when we get there. Miss Church? No, I was just going to say, um, just remember that there's always the possibility that someone can bring an Article 78 action. Okay, thank you. You answered my question. Uh, that um, an Article Article 17, you said, Miss Church? 78. 78. 78. I'll look it up. I appreciate your guidance. Have a great evening, everyone. It means that proper procedure was not followed. Yeah. Well, I'll 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 check it out. But I wanted to find out what would be the what is the protocol and you've already answered it. So I thank you very much for giving that information to me. Um, and just to repeat, we're going to cross that bridge when we get there and we will do what we have to do here to make sure the people of Brooklyn have access to the meetings and information. I'm Thanks. calling on and acknowledging Mr. Khan from council member nurse's office. Mr. Yes, Khan, your, you. your hand went down so fast. Are you... Was that by mistake? I oh, know. I just didn't want to leave it up to, so I can make it. Go ahead. That'll be easier. Uh, thank you for sharing about the the public safety uh, committees. Um, would you be able to share like a timeline on that, or when more details will be will be shared? Well, I'll tell you this, and I'm glad you're asking. So we have had all the direct meeting with the city council members. The councils are for the city council members to really put the a, a, a liaison so that we can come together, you know? We are working with the top eight precincts of Brooklyn first, which predominantly are all in Brooklyn South, although 75 and 73 in Brooklyn North are very active. And so if within your council district, for sure, you have a safety council underway. Um, a liaison from Borough Hall will reach out to assist you guys with this. We, we actually asked most members to have their first meeting this month of May, 
knowing that June is going to be very active for gun violence. I spoke to your member last month, so I ask that you please follow up with council member nurse and perhaps you become the liaison to help us move this forward. Um, and so you will see within the next, I'm going to say 30 to 45 days um, action in this particular area for local communities. Thank you. You're welcome. And we can definitely circle back offline to, to go more, more in depth. Um, does anyone else have any last questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, ideas, corrections? Okay. Excuse me. Okay. Who's that? Uh, I'm sorry. It's me, Michael Iron. Hello, uh, Michael. How, how are you? I apologize for starting so late. I got in late from work. You know, playing the J train. It took forever to go across the bridge. Please, please tell us what your affiliation is, Mr. Ian. I am. That's okay. I'm the chairperson of Community Board 18. Welcome. Hey, how you doing? We're awesome. Do you have something to add to the conversation as we are about to close? Sure. Uh, I'm sorry once again. I apologize for getting here so late. But uh, I don't like everybody uh, keeping your mind and your heart and your prayers. Uh, two people died about two weeks ago. We had a fire out here that was tragic. Firefighter died and a young autistic man also perished. So if you can, give a prayer for them. Keep them, keep them in your thoughts and your heart. It was really a bad event. And also, i like to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day. Mother's Day is coming Sunday. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you very much. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Ian. Um, Mr. Camacho, I see your hand went up. Yes, I just want uh, 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 to reiterate and to let everyone know I have been uh, involved with the uh, RAT and the PAC program that's going on in NYCHER, uh, where uh, they are, uh, the developers are, I don't know what, what is it that they're doing, but uh, privatizing, and we want to make sure that uh, if they do that, the jobs, the maintenance, the supervision, uh, the tenant, the section eight, the downsizing, the upsizing, uh, temporary work, the cleaning of the building, the outside contract hiring and the garbage uh, that our tenants uh, get their fair share in services. Uh, and we need to make sure that they're held accountable. I I know I, uh, before NYCHA used to call 311 and they went through their switchboard now they can go 311 and it goes through the 311 and there's a complaint that's made and uh you know CB4s would have to follow up on those uh complaints uh too because now it's NYCHA's are private uh entities now so we want to make sure that all our our tenants and our seniors and our people in housing are very well taken care of uh through the process Thank you for that feedback, Mr. Camacho. Um, I'm going to give about 10 more seconds to see if I see another hand dart up. Okay. Seeing nothing um, and no other business. I would like to ask any members of the borough board or their representatives if there any more new business. I think I gave an opportunity for that. There being no other business, I'd like to announce that the next meeting will be held on Tuesday, June 7th at 6 o'clock p.m. Next up on the agenda is item nine, a motion to adjourn. Is there any objection to adjourning today's meeting? No objection. None. None. Okay. There being no objections, this meeting is adjourned. I want to say thank you to all of you. I appreciate you all so much. Please feel free to reach out to Brooklyn Borough Hall in between time and meantime. Stay blessed. Happy Mother's Day. Happy holidays. Have a wonderful evening. Same to you. Mother's Day. Good night. Good night. Good night. Very same Bye. Bye. Have a good Bye. evening. Have a good Bye. evening. Bye. Happy week, spring. everyone.
Thank you, Jesus. Anytime. Thank you for the shout out. Thank you. Absolutely. I saw in the chat from, from Caroline. She's like, you miss Jesus. I'm like, oh, Jesus. How could I miss Jesus? <laughs> so thank you. I'm going to log off now. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to end the meeting now. Thank you.